ship that Mario uses to travel the world, and it's powered by these power moons, so you keep needing additional thresholds of them to get onto the next kingdom. And just to show off a little bit of the new moves, obviously there's the hat throw. You can make it stay in place, which is sometimes valuable. It can grab things for you. Uh, there's two kinds of coins, which we'll talk about it a, a little later on. And actually, they're in that little dialogue box. We saw Cappy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Cappy is both the, the red hat that he's wearing and also in his native form. He's a white top hat. Uh, and so one other move that's pretty cool is this circular throw. Knocks away everything. But let's get down into the city. And as you saw in the trailer, so there's the, the capture mechanic lets you take over things. It also lets you do fairly exotic things like turn into electricity, travel through wires. <laughs> So how did the capture mechanic come about? So when we were making this game, um, what we started out doing was making just a huge amount of different gameplay prototypes. And uh, this capture action was uh, just one of those prototypes. あの、みんなでこうアイデアを出し合った中に出てきたんですけども、それをそうですね、2、3日ぐらいで作って遊んでみたらものすごく面白かったので、すぐゲームのあの中心に入れようと決めました。So, you know, it was just one of the ideas that came up, but uh, we worked on it for 2 or 3 days and it just instantly turned into something that was really fun and we decided, well, okay, this should just be the center of this game. I love how much it encourages that exploration and experimentation that I think the Mario games along these lines are so known for when you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Here we've got uh, so much stuff that just looks interesting, and you're wondering, okay, what will happen if I throw my cap at it? You never really know what's going to happen, so you want to try everything just to see. Yeah, I, I definitely hope my people, while they're playing this game, they just throw their hat at everything and try all sorts of different things. <laughs> Whoops, that was a mistake. Uh, right now, normally, um, if you were following the story path of the game, you'd be talking to Mayor Pauline, who wants you to recruit musicians. There's one there. Um, but we're going to ignore that right now because there's lots and lots of things to do beyond following the main story of the game. Like possess rockets and turn into rockets and why with mustaches. You do that if you could? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's an interesting note there. So you mentioned Mayor Pauline, and I think our sharp-eyed viewers will have noticed that some of the street signs uh, are references to some Donkey Kong characters. We've got some interesting red girders going on here. I wonder, um, Kozuma-san and Wadokura-san, if you can tell us a little bit more about this city. It's uh, got some interesting backstory. そうですね。あの、名前もそうですし、ポリンテのドンキーコングのキャラクターって何かのゲームに関係がありそうですけど、今日はちょっとあんまり詳しく言えないんですけど。so, certainly you can tell that Pauline is from Donkey Kong, and the name New Donk City probably leads you to a couple of hints, but we can't get into too much of it today. And I like the shirt you're wearing, by the way. That is a snazzy Good choice shirt. Good today. Good choice today. Please look forward to hearing more about that. Uh, I gotta take the long way. Oh, good luck. <laughs> And this is interesting here where we see, uh, I mean, really throughout New Dong City and I think throughout the world, we've got these really fun playground elements where you're bouncing on things, you're jumping on things, you're swinging. Uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about how you came up with that kind of play mechanic in the game? ぶら下がってしてえっと飛び跳ねたりしてまあいろんなえっと環境のものになんか反応させられるんですけどえっとまどういうふうにそういうなんか遊びばっぽい雰囲気を出せるようになんか考え方ありますかはいあのまずその試
And then, you know, obviously out of that, like, different things come up, like, oh, maybe we could do this a little bit differently. Maybe this could actually work like this instead. And then we kind of add that to it, and the process just continues from there. で先ほどちょっと出たあのタクシーなんかをジャンプさせるのもあのスーパーマリオサンシャインでもちょっと似たような仕様があったのでそういうところからちょっとヒントを得ている。います。うん。And so you know you, you saw before you know we were able to jump on top of the taxi and that's something that was sort of in、uh, Super Mario Sunshine at, at times so in, in that way we're also getting hints from past games. <laughs> uh, can I quickly interject that、um, in the So, as I, as I mentioned, the goal right now is to recruit these musicians. When I was first playing this game for a feedback report for the development team, I could not figure out how to get to this guy on the top of this building. You can just barely see him. He's a speck right now in that triangular building. And the way I eventually found to do it was to take a really long fall. I did that too. And that worked. I feel bad for his knees. A bit to my surprise. <laughs> and I wanted to know, you know when, you, when you saw that report from me, you know, what was, was that a problem to be solved? Was that a cool thing? What was that? コマネオはあの NCR の報告書を書いていたときに、まあ、こういうふうにあのトランペットのバンドマンの到着できますよと書いてましたがそれ,はそれを見てちょっと困っていたんでしょうかはいあのそれは読んだんですけれどもあの読んだんですけれども今日ここでプレイするとは思わなかったです。でも自分でこういろんなプレイの仕方を探してもらえたらと思うんですけどもそれもスーパーマリオ64やスーパーマリオサンシャインから続くものだと思います。But you know, you found your own way to play it, and like you know, letting users you know play around with the game and find their own ways of doing things. That's something that you know goes goes way back in 3D Mario, you know, in Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine as well. So this is actually one of the two kingdoms that's going to be playable on the show floor. The show floor, of course, isn't open yet, so we don't have folks playing the game at this moment. But I'm really looking forward to talking to folks after they've played it, because I think there's so many different ways to problem solve and find the moons in these kingdoms. I, I'm not even sure if folks will find everything over the course of the show, but it's going to be interesting to find out how different people approached completing some of these objectives. But the game encourages so much experimentation because、yeah. you aren't kicked out of the level when you, every, every time you find a moon. There is no reason not to investigate every little thing you, you can see that might be interesting. There's no time limit, there's no, there's no disincentive. Just lots and lots of cool stuff. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that is a very interesting change that adds, I think, to the immersion in the kingdoms when you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Whenever you got your, so whatever the collectible objective was, depending on the game you were playing,、uh, you'd get bumped out of the area and you'd have to come back in. But here, since you're not going to get booted out of the kingdom when you collect a power moon, there's a lot of encouragement to just、oh, go check out that、it. weird thing you saw on the horizon because you can still continue with whatever your primary、oh, objective is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, keep, keep on tracking and finding moons. Another way, reason to explore everything is that there's very, little there's very little punishment for dying. I just lost 10 coins, and you know, there's lots. So, and I get to try again right away. It's also worth mentioning that the bullet bills here are coming out with visors on, so they cannot be captured until you knock their hats off, because an enemy with a hat is the scariest thing in this game. <laughs> Fashion is very important in this、yeah. game. You've got to be conscious of your headwear. Well, careful.ああ。Really fun to see in person. It is a gorgeous game, and we're gonna, we have some other segments later on in the, in the stream that are going to highlight some especially pretty areas. Oh, you got this. Yeah. And oh, oh, while I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed, yes. Thank you.、Um, <laughs> One thing that we haven't mentioned yet that we probably should talk a little bit about is the fact that you're playing with Joy-Con with the wrist straps attached. Yes. And、uh, that's a really fantastic way to play this game. It, of course, supports Pro Controller and other controller options, but you can do so much with the motion controls, and throwing Cappy feels very intuitive. Yeah. I'm going to switch to a, a different、uh, section of the game where I show the Sand World, which is also playable on the show floor. So give me just a moment. Oh,、here. no worries. 
But I do love that as you're experimenting, and I think we'll see folks doing that on the show floor here, so many of your gestures will affect how Cappy moves that while you're holding the Joy-Con with the wrist straps attached, you really want to just try moving your arms in different directions. Like, okay, I'm going to try throwing up, I'm going to throw down, throw out. But uh, I, I was really impressed by how well that implementation was put into play. Here we are. Yeah. Oh, this place is so pretty. So here we're in the Sand Kingdom uh, in the town of Tostarena. And... Uh, they have a problem now because uh, it's all frozen. Everything is cold for reasons, of course, that Mario will eventually solve. Yeah, actually, uh, if you hang still for a second, we can show his little idle animation when he's oh, cold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cute. <laughs> oh, he's cold. I love oh, the locals here, too. Yeah, I think he's distracted by the, by the local dancing around, but I think if he's by himself, then he really shivers. Oh, poor Mario. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. One thing, one thing I did want to show off is, so as we mentioned, there's two kinds of coins in this game. And for the, I believe the first time in the main, mainline Mario series, you can actually buy things with your coins. And I wanted to ask the developers how that came up, you know, that in, currency should be worth currency. So we wanted, you know, coins to be used as coins in this game, actually use them as money. <laughs> 外国に行った時にその国のお金ってすごいなんか印象に残ってないですか。And you know, I think I think you'll agree, you know, if you go to, you know, a foreign land, one of the things that makes the biggest impression on you is the currency. え、これ使えるのとか思ったりしないですか。You know, you kind of look at it and you think, wait, is this is this real? Can I use this? あの、今回はマリオもいろんな国を旅しますので、その国その国のコインというものを用意しています。and since you know Mario was going around to all these different kingdoms in this game, we wanted to make sure that there was a currency for each one. And you know, they're they're a collectible item, so you can use them to uh, buy different outfits or buy souvenirs. <laughs> yeah, and it's always fun to buy souvenirs, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of shopping, we are now yeah. in Crazy Cap. So there's two, there's two kinds of coins, as we mentioned. Um, the, the purple ones are unique to the, the local kingdom. The yellow ones are, can be used in any shop. Uh, I'm going to buy, because the, the guy at the, at the door said, I, maybe I should, uh, I'm not living up to their dress code, maybe I should buy some clothes to uh, fit in better. I'm going to buy a, a local sombrero and poncho. And wait till you see how adorable Mario looks. Being adorable, I just love the shopkeeper. Yeah, and their huge stack of hats. It's so cute. And you can see some of the, the souvenirs you can buy there that you can use to decorate the inside of the ship. Nice. And now I'm rocking this look. And let's go try that door again. So my capabilities are the same. You know, I still have, it's still Cappy, even though he's turned into a, a, a different kind of hat now. He can turn into any kind of headwear, apparently. Exotic superpower. <laughs> and uh, all right, so I go over and talk to this guy. Let's see if you meet the expectations now. <laughs> Ooh, snappy and lively. Snappy and lively. I think what the hat is the one and the poncho is the other. All right. And this is, of course, what <laughs> the goal I was working toward all this time. <laughs> I love all these little moments of surprise where you never really know what's going to happen yeah. when you, you Why get did into I these get in spaces. This room? I don't know. I wanted, to get, I wanted to get in this room so I could play a guitar. You want to get in because it's locked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're going to move on to some more traditional uh, 3D Mario gameplay over this direction. Now that you are terribly well dressed, it's time to go do some exploring. Yeah. And, and Bowser's footprints, I must be on the right track. <laughs> so notice that by using the motion controls, I can actually use the little homing function on the hat more easily. It is possible with the, the button controls only, but it's much more difficult. All right, the classic Goomba. Yeah. And let's just do a big one for, for that. And... And that's, uh, I guess, something folks are probably noticing here. So you're not capturing those Goomba. It's, it's not every single enemy that's capturable. That's true. Um, you've got to find the special ones. Yeah. And a lot of it's uh, having a good eye and 
just experimenting a lot with your cap. I think they're a shade bigger, the ones you can capture, but I'm not positive about that. Nice. So bullet bills, of course, are useful because you can fly with them. And, and now I've got to very quickly capture my ride back. And with bullet bills, they, you can only capture them for a limited amount of time because at some point they're just going to blow up. Yeah. So you have to be a little mindful of what you're doing. Yeah, you only get so much time up. with the explosive guys. All right, and then almost to one of my favorite bits in this level. Oh, yeah, the, okay. the next bit you're coming up to just yeah. blew my mind the first time I saw it. So this long. place has these murals that look like they're decorated in this cool old-school old aesthetic. And I'm just going to go right on in. And I've still got my costume. <laughs> so, um, Koizumasana Murakura-san, I think we definitely need to hear a little bit more background about why you added this into the game, because it's so cool, but it's so unexpected as well, I think. あの、3Dの部分はあの気持ちよく探索できるように比較的おおらかに作っています。Um so we wanted to make something that would be, you know, sort of a contrast with the 3D stages that you're able to explore very freely in. 2Dの部分はもう少しあの細かく緊張感のあるあの構成になっています。You know, the 2D the 2D spaces are kind of more confined, they're more precise, you know, it's more like kind of uh you know, sort of traditional platforming elements. Hmm. And, but also within the 2D stages, as you can see, we wanted to have a lot of different variety. And of course, you know, with the visuals, we're hoping it's something, you know, the people who enjoyed kind of those classic nostalgic ah. games also get a kick out of as well. So one thing I'd love to show off when we're getting out to avoid the end of this space is um, just how much the music changes when we're transitioning back and forth. Because yeah. I know we've been chatting, maybe it's hard for some folks to hear uh, what's been going on here, but if we just pop in and out of that warp pipe, it's a pretty impressive transition when the music changes. Oh, but there's no warp pipe up here. Just start so, off. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you can now see that it's more of a, a naturalistic instrument. So I'm going to skip ahead and uh, show off uh, the last part of this, this scenario. Uh, OK, so for that, I will need these. Wrist straps, people, always wrist straps. Yes. I also have to jump in. OK. Yeah, it's worth mentioning, too, that we're only covering a, a tiny bit of what is in this kingdom. There's so much yeah, more to do and explore. There's just a ridiculous amount. All right, so here we are. This is much later in the level. Uh, I've still got my snappy outfit, though. And watch these bullet bills transition out of the 2D. And then I'm going to use one to break open this wall. So another thing that's really handy about the bullet bills as a capture target that you'll see here, um, when you're trying to target for really precision flying, it's got a little bit of a headlamp. Ah, oh, no. no you're, oh, oh, I'm doomed. That's OK. <laughs> but it's got a little bit of a headlamp, so you can kind of use see that to line pointing. yourself yeah. up. Mm -hmm. It's super handy. That's okay because we get to see this cute little 2D to 3D transitioning. I love that. Bills. It's so cool. All right. All right, you got this. Yeah. All right, here we go. And with the bullet bills, you can also give yourself little speed bursts as well. Uh, shaking the Joy-Con will let you go a little bit further. So it's worth experimenting once you get a feel for the timing of how long a bullet bill will last. It's kind of like driving a car that doesn't have any brake pedal. It, you, can, you can go faster, you can steer, <laughs> but that's all you can do. And All right, so up here we're about to confront one of the Brutals. And uh, po folks may have seen them in our original uh, teaser trailer for this game. Um, they are an evil wedding planning firm. Uh, and I'd love to hear more from the, uh, the developers about how they came to be and what your favorite Brutal is. ブライダルズ
So they've, you know, as you kind of said, they've they've been employed by Bowser. They're in charge of making sure his wedding goes off without a hitch. They're very serious about their work. Respect that. Their work ethic is admirable. <laughs> あの、真ん中にいるちょっと背の低い同じような帽子をかぶったようなキャラクターがいるんですけれども、それがリーダーなので僕はそのトッパーというキャラクターが、あの、気に入ります。And you know my favorite is a uh, Topper, the kind of uh, shorter one who has that uh, uh, green top hat. Yeah, guy in green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Topper. How about you, uh, Kozumi san? Do you have a favorite? Kozumi san no naka kiri no kara. Ah, so desu ne, chotto ちょうど今出てるのハリエットっていうその可愛いウサギさんのキャラクターなんですけどなんか可愛い顔してるのに結構凶暴なんでそのコントラストがすごい面白いなと思ってます。This is really good timing because the character I like the most is the one you're fighting right now, Harriet. She has this great contrast between her cute appearance and like how devilish she is. She's sort of like the uh, tricky little sister of the group here. Her attacks are really fun to watch as well, yeah. especially when she starts flying around. <laughs> yeah. And it's worth mentioning, you fight each of the Brutals a few times, um, but their their tactics get more and more intense and, and dangerous. Uh, uh. But I'll be honest, having planned a wedding last year, I would take the help of evil wedding planner. Yeah, I mean, monsters. any evil help is better than no help. <laughs> and they're very dedicated to their work. And they're, they're willing they to fight your enemies for you, and that's pretty great. Oh, nice. There we go. Nicely done. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Harriet. Now she'll be back. All right. So that's a grand moon worth three power moons. And there we see Cappy in his natural state yep, as well. There he is, celebrating with Mario. Nice. All right, so that's what we have for gameplay for right now. But yeah, we did we have one more little uh, feature, I, I believe. Yes, we've got uh, some new goodies that have turned up here on stage with us. Uh, so these are the amiibo for the game. We've got uh, Princess Peach, Bowser, and Mario in their wedding. And before we get into gameplay, I just want to kind of take this all in. This is a really yeah. pretty space. I love gorgeous. the little shafts of light that come through. Mm -hmm. And I hope this is coming through on the stream, but the ambient noise here is really nice. I've got the sound of wind going through the trees. I've got bird song. And I'm going to get into a lot of trouble here, but it's a nice place to get started. <laughs> so I will kick it off and start running around here. So I can't say too much about how this kingdom fits into the rest of the game and the other kingdoms we've shown so far. But yeah, this is Treehouse Live exclusive content. We are not making this playable on the show floor. So this is just for you guys who are checking us out on stream. And I'm going to head down and chat to these fellas. So and yeah, these I, are the steam gardeners. They're the, they're the natives. Every, every kingdom has its own strange native creatures. And they're robot watering cans that take care of the flowers. And I, I love their dialogue. <laughs> Rotating out of control due to anxiety. It seems like a good way to handle stress. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all because of Bowser. Yeah. yeah, he has taken their flowers. It's very sad. They worked very, very hard on them. Rotten guy. <laughs> and what's good to know, though, is even though Bowser is causing lots of havoc, commerce is still alive and well. I've got a nice little crazy cap spot here. Yeah. And I know we did a little bit of shopping in the first segment, but I just want to visit these guys and see what they've got going on. Yeah. And as we explained in that previous segment, there are two coins. He's, he's explaining again. There's yellow coins, which are good everywhere, and purple coins that are unique to the individual kingdom. So we got some goodies there. I like how direct they are, too. Spend money. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> and they look so cute. With Subtlety their is not their strong suit. <laughs> and these caught my eye. I think that uh, since so much of this game is all about travel and exploration, having the explorer's outfit feels like a good way to go as totally. we're getting in here. And I'm going to need 15 of the local currency. Yeah, especially with all the green that. and stuff, you need an explorer outfit to yeah. so trek it. Before I'm going to mess around with these guys a little bit first. So. Oh, look at Mario Jam. Yeah. You'll see, I can change the music, and I just, yeah, I've got to get a look at this dude. So happy. <laughs> He's just so, so happy. I love his dance. But all right, we'll, we'll get up some more trouble here. Yeah. Leave that alone. Nope. One more trouble looking now. <laughs> just I'm just sorry. Sorry. That guy worked hard to stack those things. Right? He really did. Maybe his stock was there. You just ruined the shop. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd he go, Sam? I'm a Trying to smash and grab your explorer clothes? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll earn them properly. I'll, I'll get the currency. So I got two there. And you see the regional currency here, these cute little gears. Hi, buddy. Hi. All right, I'm going to leave you be. And 
This and is just intriguing. naturally, there's an Egyptian sphinx in the middle of the woods. There's a lot of very Why not? Oh, yeah, that, unusual that stuff in this forest. It's conspicuous at all. It's in the a middle strange of a place. place. Huh. Yeah. yeah. A few more coins over here. Oh, yeah. There we go. And now, over by this water. So you'll if notice you listen, every, sorry. there's frog noises. Frog noises? Yeah. Oh, you're right. The ambient uh, noise in this kingdom is just incredible. As you move around, you're going to start hearing different yeah. kinds of wildlife. I, I love that. It's so relaxing. It's just <laughs> so fitting in the setting. I was just going to comment that every time you get one of those regional coins, it comes up with, you know, X of 100. And that's because there are, you know, exactly 100 uh, in, this, in this kingdom. And they're all, you know, in specific places. So that there's, this is an, an additional collectible along with power moons and a few other things that you can find throughout the game to keep you busy almost forever. This game is huge. And that is a suspicious rock, but I'm going to That is it super suspicious. So I love that this game is really taking uh, so much of inspiration and so much of its DNA from Super Mario 64 and Sunshine. And 64 is, I think, straight up my favorite game in the Mario series. And any other folks watching who are also 64 fans, you'll remember the rabbit in the basement Those and how rabbits. much that rabbit drove you nuts. So we have a bunny here, and if I can get close enough to take a peek, he is also wearing an adorable little hat. <laughs> Are you going to steal his hat? I'm going to try to no. catch him. Come here, bud. The important thing is that if he's I wearing a hat, he friends. can't be captured. Yes. Oh, nice. That went a lot better than I was expecting it to, frankly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that actually fun. worked well. Pretty fast, yeah. Uh, it's really a nice way to, I think, practice your targeting as you're dealing with Cappy, because his trajectory as he comes back to you shifts as you're running around. You'll notice here if I throw it out, and then head this way, he's going to come back to me that way. So you can be pretty strategic about how you deal with his trajectory to get with uh, uh, some of those targets that are fast moving. And there's another look at my Odyssey ship. It's yeah. beautiful, but I need more coins. I need to get going on this. And rolling is, I think, one of my favorite ways to get I around in this really game. I really enjoy this. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> It's a quick way to get around places. It's not something I can do in real life without getting super dizzy, so I might as well take advantage here. Totally. Or Mario's got the skills. Ooh. Little tunnel. Oh, yeah, a little oh. bit of Peek purple there. All right, oh, you're so almost there. Eight. I'm getting there. But I do love how much these spaces encourage just kind of free exploration. So if yeah. I wanted to, there is uh, sort of an overarching mission that I could do here to progress the story and move along. And we'll be getting to that a little bit later, but if you just run A to B and try to focus on completing goals and you don't really dig into these spaces, you're missing so much of what this game has to offer. There's Ooh, so more much coins. more. I'm sure I can't say, you know, the numbers on the number of moons you need to complete the game and the number of moons there are altogether, but it's it's a very large a difference. Lot. I'll leave it at that. Definitely a significant volume of collectibles, which is great for me because I'm a complete collectible junkie. Yeah, yeah same for me. And, and can see. we, Ooh, Sam, can you show us the sky a little bit there? I would love to show you this guy. Let me grab these coins. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I missed. Oh, no. I'm Are you stuck short. down there now? No, I'm not stuck. I'm just short. Uh. <laughs> no. I can do this. I know that feeling. It's true. This is kind of like life. No. <laughs> I'm just accepting the fact that I'm short. Yeah. So yeah, the sky here is very interesting. You'll notice. Yeah, It's a sci-fi, like a holographic dome or something. I've, I've Apparently built by the robots. I, I I want to know more. I think this is something we're going to have to ping the devs about next time they're back on a segment because yeah, yeah. it is very curious. And if you look, it's very faint off there in the distance, but we've got these larger seams and also these little triangular panels. Yeah, yeah. it looks like a biosphere. It's Mario in his own TV show. Mountains. It, it could be. This is this is like the Mario show. Forest. It's a it's a super pretty kingdom, and all of the kingdoms in this game are just so diverse as far as what you're going to see and find there. It's a yeah, it really blew my mind the first time I played through different kingdoms and found yeah. out what they were doing stylistically. I'm going to take a little slow wander here. Well, Seems a little precarious, Sam. Uh, just, a, just a touch, but you can hear little footsteps in the grass. Mm. Oh, I got some coins. Some All coins right. to do this. Ah. Ah. <gasps> I regret my decisions and I made a mistake. <laughs> or did I? Oh. oh, there's a world underground. So... If you want to find everything that's in this game and really dig into all the interesting little corners, you're going to have to be a bit of a daredevil at certain points and take some leaps of faith and try some stuff that maybe in a Mario game you would not think is terribly wise. Mm -hmm. But this is the deep wood, and it is creepy. It I is. love this space. Mario's terrified. He does not want to be here at all. Yeah. Oh, look at him, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Even Cappy looks startled. <laughs> <laughs> but that's OK. We won't leave him down here forever. But I just want to appreciate 
how the space looks. And here, the ambient noise, we're hearing a lot more uh, insect calls, little uh, crickety kind of noises as well. And there are a lot of goodies to be found down here. I don't want to show off too many of them because we want to hang on to some surprises. Yeah. But there are some very cool things here. And I feel bad for these guys. I feel like they got the short end of the stick when it came to job assignments yeah, for who, the steam gardeners. Who, who did this guy annoy to get stuck with this job? And you will be in the deep wood. Especially <laughs> down here dark. where everybody else is up there. Yeah, it's dark and cold. And I also wanted to mention um, this, th this, this level is not playable on the, on the show floor, but there is another area kind of like this in that you have to do something that seems to be lethal to get to the, er to get to the area in question. And I didn't actually know about it until Sam showed it to me while we were preparing for Treehouse Live. Yeah. Because so, Sam is more of a daredevil than I am. I, I do a lot of very <laughs> foolish things when I'm playing games just to see what will happen, you know. Works out well in this game, though. It definitely encourages experimentation. Yeah. And this is actually kind of a neat spot here. So we've got super creepy, creepy dark forest. Everything's terrifying. And, and then, then we a have a weirdly happy cartoony little tree. tree. This is a very <laughs> happy little tree. That tree definitely seems out of place from it the does. rest of the trees. If there's one thing this game has taught me is as soon as something's out of place, you throw your hat at it. Mightiest capture. <laughs> Mario <Target>. the tree. <laughs> I am the most mighty of trees. And I can't do much, but I can do this. <laughs> the can little hopping little motion butt. gets me every time. So I'm the noise, too. <laughs> Just doing my little tree dance. Basically Ooh. what a tree would sound like if it was hopping, I'm pretty sure. But what's nice is now I was able to uncover oh, nice. another moon. So definitely when you're playing the game, and if you happen to be here at E3 and you're playing our levels on the show floor, just try throwing Cappy at everything. It's yeah. so worthwhile. You never know what you're going to find. There's a lot of just fun capture targets, fun secrets. Oh. And they've really built the, <coughs> the challenge here, where I think whatever kind of player you are, you're going to find some stuff that really feels like it's you know in your wheelhouse. It's the kind of stuff that you're comfortable doing. And then a lot of stuff that's going to take you out of your comfort zone. So maybe you're a precision jumper, or the kind of person who likes uh, uh, more of the scavenger hunt style. Mm -hmm. or just finding these weird little spots in the world. It's, it's very cool. And actually, before we head back up to the surface, there's one little friend I would like to introduce people to. I'll go nice and quietly so I don't startle him. Yeah, Is yeah. it a little friend or a big friend? He's a, he's a pretty big friend. He's pretty fantastic. I see a tail. Hi, buddy. Oh, so boy. if you watched uh, the video during the spotlight, you certainly saw the T-Rex. and. Uh, here he is wearing a fantastic hat. <laughs> he's super dapper. He's just taking a little nap. That's a cowboy hat. You didn't know you wanted to see a T-Rex sleeping in a cowboy hat until today, did you? <laughs> I feel bad for Mario. I'm doing this to him. Like, get a little closer. See the T-Rex. Is that too close? Maybe a little too close. You could and fit like three of Mario in his mouth. <laughs> oh, no. And the T-Rex is actually snoring. He's got the cutest little <laughs> snore as he's sleeping. So I'm not going to bug him and wake him up. I'm actually going to leave him in peace. But I did want to give folks a chance to actually see yeah. him in person because he's, he's pretty fantastic. I also love, though, I don't know if, you, if the people at home noticed, but there was like a little regular lizard, not a dinosaur, just a you know, oh, small. Oh, yeah, let me see if I can find that guy. Maybe the size of Mario's hand, just running around. It has no game function. It's just there because it adds this wonderful atmosphere to this place. He's a little companion to the T-Rex that's just yeah. like yeah. Yeah. sidekick. I, yeah, he might and there's like rats in New Donk City and you know, all these little atmospheric animals. The pigeons in New Donk City are amazing, too. Yeah. They, uh, they have a lot of personality, as pigeons do. <laughs> They're kind of fun to hang out with in the game. All right, so I've definitely got enough of these coins. I'm just going to grab some more, because who doesn't want to grab coins? Yeah. And we've it's got a nice little river to splash through down here. And the, the work that's been done on the water effects, I think, is just fantastic. It's gorgeous. It looks and sounds very pretty as well, actually, uh, particularly here playing with my headphones on. Getting, oh, oh there's, there's a lizard. lizard. Oh, Come there here. He is. Oh, another one, lizard. too. There's a couple lizards. I'm in the lizard kingdom. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't you let me play with you? Oh, oh, wow. You're not wearing hats? How are you immune to this? Oh, that's okay. They're really fast. I probably have to sneak up on them and take my time. Too agile for Mar Mario. I got to blend in, be more like a lizard. Earn their trust. <laughs> but that's all right. Let me find uh, one of our little buddies who had a seed. Here oh, we go. yeah, there's the, the poor, unfortunate robot. Hi. That's OK. That's a big seed to go inside that robot. Seriously. Where was he storing that? Whoop. Robot places. <laughs> I think it was actually in his head. So now he doesn't have the little piece on his head there. I, I think it yeah. just kind of popped out of his skull. Are you saying you took his brain? He's Maybe. not talking anymore. Oh, boy. <laughs> no judgments. I needed a seed to get home. 
So I'm going to toodle my way back over here. This is a... There we go. So this is one of the spots. And we passed by a few of these, but I'm going to try this one out and see what happens. Oh, oh. oh not quite close enough. Here we go. There we go. And up, up it we goes. Go. So that's my pathway back up to the sunlit surface. And there's a lot of stuff here that I'm not going to show, but there's stuff down here. So uh, when folks have a chance to get their hands on the final game, I highly recommend yeah. visiting the Deepwood. It's a really cool spot. Poke around in every nook and cranny, folks. You'll find something more often than not. For sure. And so here, we actually popped up on the other side of that ridge. So that is where I was coming down. And one of my favorite capture targets is over here. So I would like to introduce our viewers to this wonderful little critter. Yeah. This is an uproot. As I suppose you can tell, he's got little planty legs. Yeah. And he goes up, and this brings back down. Yeah. And uh, let's actually take a better look at him. And his Hi. Yeah, flower pot <gasps> counts as a hat. So, so he is all kinds of adorable, all by himself. But he right. looks better with a mustache. He's trying so hard to get look. to you. <laughs> He's <laughs> glorious. And now you've become one. And oh. his little hand leaves. I love the way he waves his he's little hand leaves so around. He's just so cute. And he's polished himself to a nice shine. He's yeah. He takes care of himself. I think he waxes. Yeah, with that little mustache. <laughs> he's he's pretty shiny. And his <laughs> noise. Wait, listen to him walk. <laughs> he's got the cutest little squishy feet. So all right, now I'll show off his ability. So one of the things that's really cool in this game is all the different capture targets you get are going to give you access to different abilities. So here, I've got this nice springy jump. I can actually shake my Joy-Con to give myself a bit of extra boost. And so I can reach things that normally I wouldn't be able to. And a good chunk of the puzzle solving in this game is actually finding something weird, something maybe that you can't get to or you can't interact with, and then figuring out what in the world is going to let you interact with it. And a lot of times it'll be a capture target. And you have to find maybe the right item, the right enemy, mm -hmm. and get it to where you need to be. And a lot of it's trial and error. You just kind of yeah. mess around. You make some new friends, take over their bodies. And a lot of times the challenge trees. will be, you know, oh, I, I see I need to bring this kind of enemy to this spot, but how on earth can I get an enemy, you know, that can't jump, for example, to this place to use it? And uh, different capture targets. They'll have different advantages, but also some different weaknesses. So a lot of it's uh, going to be kind of getting experience with these different enemies and finding out yeah. how they work to your advantage and also how you have to be careful with them so you look after them if you're trying to get them from A to B. And... Yeah, he's just adorable. Yeah. Look at his little legs. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I, I've appreciated my little friend and his yeah. cuteness. And I'm going to actually head back down this way because we have enough coins. We could actually go get that outfit. Uh, I'm going to leave you here, bud. Hi. And oh, actually, this so is kind of interesting. So I'm just going to hang out with him. He's a little dizzy. He's dizzy. Feels a little funky. Oh, and his poor eyes. Had him bouncing around for a while. But if I hang out long enough, so what I can do, grab him again. So if I had to finish something up, uh, maybe there was a task I had to complete as Mario, I could let go of my capture target, and while it's sitting there dizzy, I can get something else done and then recapture it. But if I leave him long enough, he's actually going to work back to where he started. So he's he's OK. He's another worse for wear. He's going to go home. Oh, coins. Wait. Coins. Oh. Come Whoa, here. that's a big stack of coins. Oh my God. Ah, come here. I didn't see where that came from. Where did that come from? Oh, it's, oh it went down somewhere I don't want to go. Shoot. Oh. I missed it. No, it bounced out of one of the bushes but that is not something I want to show folks just yet, so I'm going to let that go. Whee! Splash. Ooh. And nice. also oh, and he's wet. Yeah, Look his, at him coming his out of water, water texture looks so cool. Oh, man, the detail. That's <laughs> so amazing. I love it. He yeah. drips for a little bit as he's splashing around. The That's detail okay. work in this game is, is just insane. Hey, I'll tell you, every time I see a new ROM of this game, they've hit the textures up again and brushed them up, and it's, yeah. it's always interesting firing up the new ROM and seeing what they've done. I spend money. I will spend money. I will now. spend money on that. Thank you. And we showed changing in Crazy Cap in our last segment. So I'm actually going to hang on to these because there's another place that we can go to change. And I'd like to show that off. All right, buddy. Thank you as well. Maybe later. Why, thank you. All right. So I have got my. And you'll notice there's souvenirs yeah. for sale there as well that are specific. You know, these are the Steam Gardens souvenirs that you can decorate the Odyssey with. Oh, actually, and I'll point those out as well because we're actually going to take a peek inside. So here, oh yeah, I've got a sticker that would actually go on the outside, kind of like a bumper sticker for your car. I yeah. Decorate my Odyssey, and then some souvenirs there. I won't scroll any farther, but there's there's goodies to be had in each <laughs> of these kingdoms. Yeah, I love that customization. New music. You could just pick and choose how you want yeah. your, your Odyssey to look like. I totally love dig this kingdom, so I'm going to get all of its stuff first. Yeah. And rolling, because Mario has a very strong stomach, and he does not get dizzy. <laughs> 
And so this is the Odyssey, and we're actually going to take a look inside so we can show off what's going on in our ship. So this is the interior of the Odyssey. And you can see I've got some really interesting shelves up here. So I've got some spots I can put some things as I collect some new stuff. Got a nice little seat. I can just chill out and have a relax here by my coffee table if I want to. <laughs> but I've also got this closet here. And I can change to my new outfit pieces here. So I'll hit up the Explorer outfit. Nice. Looking and there's even a mirror. Boss. Yes, I can actually get myself positioned right to get the angle. Where am I? Over here. Close. There's my hat. OK, so I'll move it here. There, oh, yeah, there we, we are. Go. Hey. Yeah, it's pointed toward the center, center of the room, room here. Yeah. So I'm thinking uh, Mario's looking good. I'm feeling explorer appropriate now. So <laughs> this might actually be a good time to visit that Sphinx and say hi. Maybe throw a couple rocks around for good measure. Hi, buddy. Uh, I'm going to leave him alone for now. That's all right. So let's head over here and pay this fellow a visit. OK, so what did Bowser steal from this kingdom? Water, wood, flowers, or soil? Now, based on the conversation that we had with those steam gardeners earlier, I'm going with flowers. Yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> flowers are what got taken. Yeah. All right, so now I can head a little bit further into this area. Got some more local currency to grab. Always good to catch those. And these are actually fun, too. We've got uh, these little signposts. As you're playing through the game, you'll learn how to do different moves, get some different tips and tricks. So as you see these signposts, it's really worthwhile to take a look at those and see what they have to offer. And some of those are returning moves, like, like the backward somersault, mm -hmm. but others are brand new and or hat-specific and that sort of thing. So this is a very different spot. Got some really cool stuff going over here in the corner. Wow. But first, I've got this purple stuff. Now, you see I can splash it around with Cappy, which is good, because if I actually come in contact, and I'll do it because I'm a foolish, foolish person. Ow! Oh. Oh. Yeah, that hurts. So I have to be very careful of this purple business. And thankfully, Cappy's able to splash it away. And you'll see that there are actually some coins hidden under it. So I've run into this obstacle, but it's actually really in my best interest to try to deal with it. So I'm going to find some more coins. And as I think with uh, the rest of this game, you just never really know what's waiting for you in spots. So it's really worth checking every little corner. We got some uh, nice views over here, some more off into the woods, and some other activity over there. But I'm going to head back this way. A bit more of that out here. I love the surf guitar music here. Yeah, the contrast from the very environment ambient noise that yeah. we just came from. It, it kind of matches. Butterflies. Yeah, it kind of matches like the girders that kind of off sand from the rest of the environment. It just <laughs> comes hand in hand, I guess. Oh, sure. All right, so let's hit the checkpoint flag first, and then we've got the binoculars. So these are returning from a previous Mario games. So I want to grab this guy. I can get a really nice look at what's coming up. So I can see the brutals, it looks like, are hanging out up there. Yeah. And then there's a lot there's a of lot terrain of up space, here. Yeah. And a lot of stuff I can see already that I'm, I'm not even close to touching on in this segment. But this is a really big kingdom, and there's a lot of interesting surprises there. We got another rocket ship like we saw yeah. in uh, our first segment back yep. in New Donk City. So just to give you a little bit of a sense of what's out here, and I can zoom in and out a little bit, get a closer look. There's another one of my little buddies. <laughs> Hi, up root. Just putting around doing his thing. All right, so there I will pop out. And I've got some piranha plants up here. They're spitting that same purple goo, so I know I have to be careful with these guys. And this is actually a good chance to talk about the camera control as well. So just as I'm kind of getting the lay of the land before I head forward, this is all just really smooth movement that I'm able to do with my right stick. So. I can get a really nice view. You'll notice there Mario goes a little translucent when I'm really close, so <laughs> I'm not blocked as far as my view goes with what he's doing. And I can get a really nice view. And oh. his idle animations <laughs> are actually fantastic, too. So it's kind of nice just to let Mario hang out for a minute as you're figuring out where you want to go next and just kind of watching what he gets to. He might actually take a nap here, see if he will. Oh. Maybe going to get comfortable. Step one. Going to oh, sleep. Yeah, yeah. 
So Mario talks in his sleep, and it is adorable. So <laughs> if you have an opportunity, if you happen to be here and you are messing around with the show for a while, if you have a couple seconds to let Mario take a little nap, it's oh, really cute. Oh, now you're all purple. I am so purple, and I actually <laughs> stay messy. All right, Cappy is taking one for the team there, and actually, Proud Pants are eating him. So here, no more spitting purple goo, and I can just give him a little punt. I like that tag team work there. Yeah, it's nice that Cappy's invincible. He takes a fair amount of punishment in this yeah. game. <laughs> so. It's a hard life for a hat. There we go. Very common right. question mark boxes. So I can hop up there, but I'm actually going to take a little stroll this way. Yeah. And be very careful again of these. Uh, this grossness. Boom. Feels good to just be able to kick over a piranha plant. Yeah, take that yeah. piranha plant. I'm not that skinny kid from the beach anymore. <laughs> Come here. I'll take this one out too. I'm going to get a little bit lower so I can get the right angle on him though, because Cappy is going to go kind of in a straight line. He's not going to go up or down when I'm using him this way. So I need to be very careful. I can certainly throw him. So if I swing my arms up with the motion controls, I get a nice forward throw. If I swing them down, I actually get a nice forward roll. That's pretty good. But when I toss him, it's really tossing on a level plane. So I need to be very careful of where I am in relation to where I'm throwing him to make sure that I'm actually making contact with what I'm going to make contact with. So, let's sneak over here. Don't want to leave any question blocks unsmashed. Yeah, the music here is really kind of nice and jazzy. I gotta say, I really like this girder environment. It's bringing me back to the DK stages. And totally, I yeah. absolutely love DK, so this is this is very nostalgic for me. And I love the, the, the color contrast with, you know, you've got the, the, the red metal and the, the green fl I don't know, plants and everything. It, it's both a texture and a color contrast. It literally looks fantastic. Yeah. And you can tell this has been here a while because it has this growth on it. Yeah, there's yeah. some interesting stuff going on here with what looks like maybe steam coming out of those pipes as well. And I guess yeah. being the steam gardens, they are maybe using that in some way. Hi! Yeah. Oh, hello. Yay! <laughs> I'm just so happy! <laughs> so good! Okay, enough of that. I swear, the first time I captured one of these guys, I just ran around gigging with an idiot for Yeah, like same. I've been talking about your uproot problem. It's, it's, <laughs> you call it a problem, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's a way of life. It's, it's magic. And they make a cute little noise when they hit that top. <laughs> you guys are trying to one-up each other? Is that what's happening? We're, we're dancing. This is how they communicate, baby. We're, we're just kind of hanging out, but I don't want them to hurt me. So it's like how bees will they hurt each the other of flowers. Oh, buddy. So this is an interesting, almost really a side-scrolling section where I need to use my uproots abilities. It's worth clearing out some other stuff here too, just to see what's maybe hidden away. Oh, hello. Oh, there you go. There we go. Nice. Your fourth moon. Yeah, and there's that's that little so counter on the upper left to tell you how many moons you've gotten. And it, the first time you arrive in a kingdom, there's a number of moons you need in order to get to the next kingdom. And it'll you show up as little outlines. This this particular ROM, because it's for Treehouse Live only, it doesn't show that because we're not trying to get to a next kingdom. But no, we're yeah, gonna it helps show you keep little, track. little bits and pieces here, but there's certainly a lot more going on in these kingdoms that we've got here. Yeah. And the beautiful reflection texture on these girders, too. Oh, Steam right. gardeners look after their place. They, keep they really do. Tidy. They're hard workers. Ooh. All right, so I've got some more coins there. And here, I'm actually going to pop this up to the top and try to it's coming for you. pop over this guy. Come here. Come on. Come over this way. There we go. I'll lure you away. <laughs> and now I You're going for your pacifist run, Sam? <laughs> there we go. I don't want to hurt these little guys. They're, they're too <laughs> precious. They just want to do their thing. Maybe have some sun and some fertilizer. All right, so we've got some coins up here. Certainly don't want to miss those. And we're getting very close to our objective, so this is the next spot. And there's little checkpoint flags, mean go. you can warp there in the future. Which is I'll actually let my little Super handy when you're going here. back later for completion goals and such. So he's dizzy, and just looking back, so 
it's worth it, I think, as you're progressing through these kingdoms, every once in a while to stop and take a look backwards because you're going to see some things that you uh, maybe didn't notice, didn't realize were there. So there, for example, I've got some regional coins that I didn't hit on this run, but looking at them from this direction, I can see, oh, there's something there. There's some other interesting stuff going on in that corner, too, so it's certainly worthwhile, you know, uh, backtracking yeah, yeah. Uh, and taking another look at spaces, and there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. Sure, that especially when you're a completionist and you want to get every single moon and every single item that the world yeah. has to offer. Oh, yeah, and this game will keep a completionist busy for a good long oh, while. Yeah. There's uh, so much stuff to find here. Oh, so here we go. Uh, that little crown pot actually made the mistake of chomping onto that rock I threw over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I will leave him to rest now. All right, I'm ready. Boom! Nicely done. I'm going to clear out some more of this because I want to make sure if there's any goodies under here, any hidden coins. I want to find these, and there we go. That cap spin is really handy in that spot. Yeah. That looks and really good, too, when you execute it. Yeah, the cap spin's a great move for clearing territory around you. Uh, if you've got a lot of enemies nearby, or maybe you have, like in this case, a lot of this toxic liquid nearby as well, it gives you a really good kind of circle of protection around you. And it can be actually helpful um, for some boss fights as well, just to give yourself a little bit of a perimeter of safety. Your turn, buddy. I'm sorry. You gotta go. <laughs> and here, oh, it's a big we've one. got an impressive... Oh big piranha plant going on. If we take a look closer up here, I might actually see. Oh, and there's the brutal you're getting ship. close to them. They're our friends. The, uh, the HMS Brutal. Beautiful, beautiful wedding planners. They live All up right. to their name. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're brutal. brutal. They are brutal as well as being you know, bridal. Oh, well, it's a hard brutal. job, you know? And yeah. It's a cutthroat business. Got to make yourself stand out. Maybe being willing to take on all challenges and <laughs> fight people is how they make their wedding planning for each day down. If you have enemies intent on stopping your wedding, these are the, the folks to hire. Yes. Good to note. So there. Oh, the rock. It's not all tasty. Right. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, I know that didn't taste good at all. Okay. I want to get you, though. All right. Almost well, there. Same. We're uh, just about Bam. out of time here, Sam. Ah, oh, perfect timing. Done. Yeah, well done. So that was the Wooded Kingdom, which is our Treehouse Live exclusive area for E3. And hope folks enjoyed taking a look at yeah. it. Yeah, thanks for showing. No worries, so, Sam. So up next, there's the Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational, um, and that's happening in just a minute or two. Tomorrow, we're going to start with uh, information on Pokemon uh, Pokken Tournament Deluxe. Uh, with a Treehouse Live segment on that. Then we'll have uh, the Pokken Tournament Deluxe Tournament, which is a little hard to say. Uh, and then after that, sometime in the early afternoon, we'll start with